you believe that for the sin is a death penalty? No. Do so, you believe no, we don't that? believe that. So, so, so you believe, that, so do you believe as a Christian, yeah. if a small baby or a small child, 15 years old, teenager, he steals, uh, steals a cookie. Yeah, from, you believe because the Bible says that. That the punishment is death? For everything, punishment is a death. Muslim friends who often criticize the Christian faith frequently accuse that the concept of original sin, ancestral sin, or whatever it may be called, originates from the Apostle Paul. This accusation is clearly inaccurate because it turns out that the idea of original sin exists in the Old Testament. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me, Psalm 51 to 5, Tehillim 51 to 7. Yuvikat Yekmanimi. In sin, my mother conceived me. It uses Hebrew parallelism by using two words, Avon and Ketaukate. Hebrew parallelism always conveys the idea of equivalence, not contrasting or distinguishing between iniquity and sin, because both of these words are like two sides of the same coin. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. 1 John 5:17. So, if David wrote, Yuvik hit Yekimat Niimi, in sin my mother conceived me. Considering the words used by the Orthodox Jewish Brit Chadasha, Orthodox Jewish New Testament and connected with the Greek New Testament, then the words sin original sin, Greek, Amartia, he is synonymous with the Hebrew word, ket, kate. The Muslim in the video mentions the sin of babies. There is a fundamental difference between having sin and committing sin. Babies already have sin, but have not yet committed sin. What is man, that he should be clean? And he, which is born of a woman, that he should be righteous, Job 15:14. In the Jewish perspective, a baby from the moment of birth possesses Yetzer Hera, the evil inclination. Within them, as it is written, sin lieth at the door Genesis for to seven, but as a baby, of course, they have not yet committed sin. In their growth as a human, they become capable of committing sin through their free will, or because they can distinguish between good and evil due to having Yetzer Hat off. The good inclination, moral conscience, natural conscience, both the Yetzer Hera evil inclination and Yetzer Hatov. Good inclination exist within a person, and they are given the ability to discern the impulses of Yetzer Hera or Yetzer Tov. Please distinguish between the sinful nature and acts of sin. A newborn baby will not commit sins but they already have a condition or nature of sin. For example, who teaches a child to lie, or gather babies who can crawl or walk, place them in a place, and give them something, let's say a toy, to capture their attention. What will they do? There will surely be a struggle over the toy, and there will surely be crying because some didn't get it. What causes all of this? Many experts investigate that a child can lie without being taught or without environmental influence. Similarly, a young child can snatch a friend's toy not because they were taught by their parents, but because of an impulse within themselves. This is the nature of sin. This is what, among Christians, is referred to as original sin, ancestral sin, inherited sin, or whatever term is used to distinguish it from acts of sin. Sin is a violation of God's law, an act of wrongdoing, failing to do what one should do, etc. 
The term original sin, or what is called ancestral sin, is related to the disobedience of Adam in eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and the effect of this original sin then extends to all humans born of Adam and Eve. Because Adam and Eve sinned, all humans born become endowed with a nature of sin. Original sin can be explained as sin, and wrongdoing inherent in all humans as a direct consequence of Adam's sin. In the Garden of Eden, as a consequence of Adam's sin, all his descendants inherit a sinful nature, or nature of sin because he is the father of all humanity. Pay more attention to the word consequence. So then as through one transgression, there resulted condemnation to all men, Romans 5, 18. The consequences of Adam's sin are that the gates of heaven were closed, sickness, suffering, and death entered the world. The minds of humans were dominated by darkness, and they became weak. The Bible teaches that when God created humans through His Word, and in His Spirit, humans were created in the image and likeness of God, Genesis 1, 26-27. The term in the image of here means patterned after. In the Bible, it is explicitly explained that Jesus Christ is the Word who dwells in God and descends from heaven is the image of God Colossians 1.15 and also the form of God Philippians 2-5b. This means that the word of God through whom humans were created is the original pattern of human nature? Because the original pattern of human nature is the word of God. This means that a person can only be considered a human if they have united or merged with God himself through his word. If this is the case, then a person should be united in the eternal life of God so that the divine image and likeness is truly manifested in human life. So, the original nature of a human is not subject to sin, corruption, destruction, and death. Because as the living God, God never created anything called death, let alone humans whose essential nature is in the image and likeness of God, certainly not created to die but to live together with God. This can be demonstrated by the fact that when humans were created by God, they were breathed with the divine breath of life Genesis 2-7. This means that human life has the potential for eternity, but to lead to eternal life with God, humans are tested by God. In that test, God said that on the day humans eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt surely die, Genesis 2, 17. This means that the threat of death was given only on the day when humans were disobedient and ate the fruit that God had forbidden. This means that if humans had obeyed God's prohibition, they would not have died for sure. Thus, indeed, humans were created not to die, that's why God warned humans about the consequences and how they could achieve this permanent state of immortality.